This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Tascam 1608, and what got my attention is the iOS compatibility, because you know what? That usually means it's going to work out of the box. Also, this seller happened to save the rack ears, because apparently, step one, after opening the box when you buy one new, is to toss them out. Let's take a look at it. On the front, we have a power switch, followed by two toggles for phantom power, one through four, five through eight. We have eight XLR inputs followed by two quarter inch inputs that are switchable between line level and instrument. Then we have gain knobs for the 10, yes, 10 preamps, each with a clip light, volume control for line out, then the headphone jack. On the back, we have a USB B hole for the PC connection, hardware MIDI in and out. Then we have balanced line ins with a level switch for 15 and 16, then line out. Hang on, all right. Line out is one through eight on the bottom and 11 through 16 on the top. Huh. You get 16 physical inputs on this guy. Nice. Then we have a magical switch that saves power followed by the 12 volt DC in. But I'm here for the rack ears. Putting them on requires pulling these off and yes, they are metal. I do believe they're aluminium. And this is what it looks like upside down. A nice heavy block of metal. No plastic on the case. Let's get it plugged in. Time to crack open all some mixer and have a look at our 1608. Let's select the 1608 and yeah, it picks everything up because it's supported in the Linux kernel. All the options for controlling mixing, EQ, compression, etc. All 280 of them. Moving on to Jack, we'll make sure the 1608 is selected in QJack CTL. I'm going to be using 48K, 128 frames with a period of two. Let's close that and give it a start. Let's head over to the graph and take a look. We can see capture ports 1 through 16 and outputs 1 through 8. Nice. Pulse Audio detects the 1608 like any other sound card under Linux. You can set it to input, output, or both. It shows up like you would expect under both the input and output tabs. We need to install a few dependencies before we can build the mixer GUI. Instructions for Arch-based distributions will be linked in the video description, thanks to Arthurin, but we're on Debian and this is what we're using. Now that we have the needed bits installed, we can clone the Tascam GTK Git repo. Let's bounce over to that directory. Okay, we need to run auto recomp, followed by configure, and finally make. You can use the J flag to speed things up if you know how many CPU cores you have available. Once that's done, we will have a Tascam GTK binary ready to go. Let's open that up and play around a bit. All right, everybody, let's take a look at the Tascam US1608 DSP mixer because it is a nice functional GUI and we don't normally get this under Linux. And of course, it's not official, but a gentleman decided to take the time and organize all the controls and also mixer into this and it gets the job done. Over here on the right side, we have routing and I have a tracks, you know, master left, master right. That's going to be your headphones. And of course, you have the options of do you want it going output one through eight? And that's just going to tell the device where to send things. Easy enough, easy to understand. If you want to bypass the mixer, the DSP or the mixing functionality there, that does that. And of course you have computer out to stereo bus if you want to send something to the stereo bus of the mixer itself. You'd click that and the mute does what you would expect. Now I'm not 100% on, I'm guessing this channel, if I go all the way down or if I go all the way back up. Okay, that's going to do that. Link button. Let's say you wanted to create a stereo pair from two mono sources. We do have a compressor. I've set that just to 4.1, you know, four to one. Uh, two milliseconds is as fast as it can come in, which is fine till millisecond release. That'll be fine. Uh, you have makeup gain and of course, you know, your basic threshold. So I can go ahead and kick that in. Compressor is going to do what a compressor is going to do. Any peaks, it's going to jump on that, smash them back down. And of course you can use the makeup gain to bring the overall signal back up. So, you know, your quiet parts are louder and your louder parts are quieter. You just got to be careful, though, because the tighter you get that, the flatter your signal is going to get. And I have no processing on. I, I played around with EQ. I'm not trying to do anything fancy with that. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, kick that in. I do what I normally do with a parametric equalizer. I boosted my highs by about 4 dB, around 5.5K. Knocked a little bit off the mid high at 2.8. Left the mid the same, but I boosted it around boosted it but it changed frequency over about 7k the cues i didn't play around with you know we have the uh, width control for upper and mid bands and uh always on the low you know i pulled out 7 db around 700 on this guy just to knock the bass out because you know it's just a little too boomy with my voice and uh seven hey you know no 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 i could be like a regular i don't know guys here's a free pro tip 
don't bass boost. Don't. That doesn't sound right. Nobody um nobody ever hears you and goes, man, yeah, that sounds natural. It doesn't sound natural at all. I do quite the opposite because I get a big boomy voice. And um, yeah. So you know what? I could definitely see using this. And I, I don't want to say in a pinch because this is usable. This is usable. 16 physical inputs. You know, you could track man with 16 of them you can do a drum kit and you get room left over you you get the uh, two preamps for the quarter inch input so you'd have that coming directly in and so it's gonna leave yeah like you this is a useful useful little device and having the mixer on hand just makes it that much easier so i could definitely see tracking with this one thing i really i understand why it's not in this but for broadcast if you're doing podcast or on you know just on-site recording Having something like a built-in downward expander or like worst case scenario, noise gate, that would have been perfect. That would have been perfect, but there it is. Hascam US1608 DSP mixer. It works, it gets the job done. And you know what? If you have like the smaller four channel version of this, like try this out and leave me a comment. This is the Reaper session used to record Linux Gamecast Weekly. Six tracks, 24-ish plugins, and some oddball stuff I used for network audio. It's running at a sample rate of 48k with a 128 buffer. Now I run this test for about 10 minutes to see if we can generate X runs. X runs are the system's way of telling us something in the chain is too slow, and that usually results in bops and clicks. You don't want them. I'm happy to say the 1608 gets a clean bill of health. While many kinds of audio latency metrics exist, one useful and very well understood metric is round trip latency. That's the time it takes for an audio signal to enter the input of a device, get processed, and exit the output. The following measurements were taken using Jack I.O. delay, and I'm happy to say the 1608 is no slouch, even though it's a USB audio interface. At 44.1, you can see it gets very usable, very quick, at a buffer size of 128, giving you 11.34 milliseconds, and that's just on the side of usable. However, at 48K, at the same 128 buffer size, it's down to 828, happily use that for real-time monitoring, and all the way up to 96K. We don't have much in the way of options, because you only go down to a 128 size buffer, but that's going to get you 6.25 milliseconds of round trip latency. And if we have a look at our big list of USB audio interfaces under kernel 6.0, you can see the Tascam 1608 is right at the top. The only thing that is beating it, and beating it by quite a bit, is the AIO Pro, which is cheating because it's a PCI Express interface that cost four times as much. Oh, here we go. And this is the part where I just disassemble something. And I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to tell you what I think about the 1608. Because Tascam, they've been in the business of making recording gear for 50 years. Mostly professional stuff and some prosumer recording stuff. And I got to say, the 1608 falls in the later. It's more of a prosumer device. But it punches way above its weight. Let's look at the big pros here. You don't get 8. You don't get 4. You get 10 very nice preamps capable of delivering 56 dB of gain. 16 physical inputs on the device. A lot of devices you will have maybe eight inputs and you can add another eight through light pipe. No, 16 physical inputs. You get onboard EQ and compression with complete mixer bypass plus that hardware mixer built into the system and hardware MIDI. That's really nice. A couple of bad things maybe I not necessarily didn't like, but things that could have been improved is there is no digital IO on this thing at all. You don't get those light pipes for adding, you know, an additional eight channels. You don't get spit up for two different channels. So your only digital in or out is the USB connector. And then inputs one through eight XLR only. I really wish those were combo jacks. That would have been amazing, right? Then you could have went quarter inch or XLR. Had a ton more options, but hey, that's not a killer. You can always use an adapter. And if I'm being picky, that front panel is very Spartan. All you get are your gain knobs, and clip lights. It's the only feedback that you get from the device itself. But how much can you expect to pay for a 1608 in 2022? Well, at the time of recording, you can pick one up for about $350 new. Or if you want to pop over to some place like Reverb or eBay, they go for around to $250 on the used market. Links in the description, by the way. And you know what? It's an absolute deal. If you're looking for something with 16 physical inputs, it's a no frills, big block of metal designed to get get done. I'm a big fan of that. The internal DSP is just icing on your lobster cakes, man.
and it works out of the box on Linux. It's got Linux support built into the kernel. You can't beat that. So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, like and subscribe, all that jazz. For the updates, if you enjoy these guides, you can support future videos directly by becoming a patron, like these lovely mist screens that are flying by on your screen right now. They get special bonus content, access to our Discord, and more. But as always, just get out there and make something awesome.